Hi, welcome back to Test Sciences series of Reliability Growth Modeling Modules. Remember, in Module 1, we covered the motivation behind testing systems and the basic definition of reliability. This module will cover the basics of collecting data to analyze reliability growth. So let's recall a concept we introduced in the previous module, Taft. So we talked about testing our LMTV in a mission environment and how we would test until we observe a failure mode. For visualization, we said something along the lines of stopping the test, analyzing the cause of failure, fixing it, and resuming the test, and the cycle goes round and round and round. Now, of course, this is the basic idea of what we do in testing. But in all actuality, we may test observe a bunch of failures, record all those times, and continue testing in the interest of time. And then we may analyze those and fix all of those at the end. There are a number of different ways we may actually handle repairs in a testing environment. But for the sake of generality, let's keep the nice clean cut, stop, analyze, fix, resume testing. The whole concept of testing and fixing introduces the notion that our reliability growth models assume that we're working with things we can repair, so repairable systems. So since we just said that we're interested in repairable systems, this introduces the notion that there are things that are non-repairable, so we have non-repairable systems. Non-repairable systems would be the equivalent of testing out our LMTV, observing one failure, and trashing the vehicle altogether after that one failure. Well, that sounds a little extreme. So instead, let's consider a commonplace system like a light bulb. At some point, this light bulb will burn out or fail. Now, it seems quite silly for you to try and repair the light bulb by going into the glass and fixing the issue. No, instead, you replace the light bulb entirely with a new light bulb. Since the system is being replaced with a new system, this doesn't allow us to collect multiple data points on a system to see if we observe reliability growth, because we only have one data point. In contrast, repairable systems are systems we repair anytime we observe a failure. This allows us to collect multiple data points on the same system as it fails and is repaired over the course of the testing period. So essentially, what we end up with is a series of tests. So this also introduces the issue of needing to know what type of data we are collecting. For example, if we're testing our LMTV and we observe that the back hatch no longer closes, we stop the test or stop the testing clock, record the time at which this failure occurred in terms of that global test clock, and let's say that occurred at the second hour. And this would be T1 for the time of that first failure. We also record what failure happened. And in this case, it was the back hatch not closing. So after that first cycle, uh, and we, we do our analyzing and fixing stage, we hit resume on our testing clock to keep the total time running. Then let's say we observe that the braking is not functioning properly, which is certainly an issue we would stop the total test clock. At T2, we record a failure mode at say hour five and how things failed, the brakes. But now we're presented with a few options. We can record T2 as five hours, or we can record the time between failures, like an interval. So T2 here, let's say that's hour five. We could record this X2 just forget the, the notation here. This is just for purposes of understanding that this would be the other option, recording the time between failures, like a time interval. And in this case, since T1 was equal to two hours and T2 is equal to five hours, that time interval is three hours. In a later module, we will talk more about the parameters associated with reliability growth models. We will return to this time between failure and present the utility of mean time between failures. Now, lastly, another kind of data you might collect is the total number of failures that you observe while watching the system for a particular amount of time. And this keeps basically a running total of 
failures that you observed while watching the system uh, over the course of the testing period. Now let's think about how we might use this data. One way is to visualize it and hopefully to see our LMTV becoming more and more reliable over time. As we collect more data, we're hoping that the time between these failures is increasing. This means that the curve connecting our data points is stretching out. This smaller slope indicates that the rate of failure is decreasing as time goes on, which is certainly what we're hoping will happen. Now, the last thing to mention in this module is what types of models we can develop using this data. So perhaps our primary interest is to track improvement. As the description suggests, there are tracking models which use the data to track whether or not the system is improving or not. The second type of model we will consider is a planning model. And this one is actually used before the data is collected. And this helps us get an initial idea about how the system's reliability will improve over time. Lastly, we can use models to look at the future of a new system to project whether or not the system's data trends thus far demonstrate that it will achieve its required goal or function. Now we ended that last slide talking about planning, tracking, and projection models. But before we dive into detail on reliability growth models, we need a fundamental understanding of some statistical concepts, which will be covered in the next string of modules. So let's review. In this module, we have built on module one's objectives of understanding the motivation for testing equipment to measure reliability. We have now a basic understanding of collecting the data that will help us observe reliability growth. As we test equipment, we observe failures. We analyze the cause of failure, fix or repair them, and then resume testing until the next failure occurs. The collection of those data points lets us observe whether or not systems are improving or working for longer periods of time. The hope is that with each subsequent fix, that systems are becoming more reliable to meet function and mission standards. So what's up next? If you feel comfortable with PDFs, CDFs, Poisson distributions, exponential distributions, and the assumptions and parameters associated with them, you can skip ahead to the modules covering homogeneous and non-homogeneous Poisson processes. Those modules set the groundwork for exploring the three categories we cover for reliability growth models, the Poisson process models, power law models, and competing risks models.